Tom Palmer is a senior fellow at the Cato Institute. He's a free marketeer, which makes him an interesting person to talk about in the South African context, because although we pay lip service to the free market, do we really have a free market in South Africa? So let's talk about capitalism. A lot of people would say capitalism isn't a great system, but it's the best one we've got. You'd argue, I think, Tom Palmer, that it's a fantastic system, and if it was implemented properly, it would be the world would be a better place. I think generally, but that's true. But we have to be very clear: what do we mean by capitalism? And that's, of course, the key. When I talk to people, as I often do, who are critical of capitalism, and I ask, "What is it that you don't like?" Usually, it boils down to cronyism. But that's not free market capitalism. That's a creature of state interventionism. So the cronyist element is sometimes confused because you can have nominal private ownership of a whatever land or business, but the person owns it because they're friends with the prime minister or the minister of this or that or the president or what have you, not because they're offering goods and services in the market. So cronyism, in my opinion, is the real competitor to free market capitalism. Socialism is over. It's, it's not a serious institutional alternative anymore. The alternative to free market crony, uh, capitalism is cronyism. And that's what most people don't like. Cronyism, though, isn't exclusively political. Cronyism is very comfortable within the capitalist system, isn't it? Insofar as one can get benefits from the state, no question, that you can then get favors, they bend the rules, competition is excluded, it turns out your competitors get special tax audits, and so on. And that system is found all over the planet. It's a disease of human interaction, unfortunately. But you can have more or less of it. Switzerland has less cronyism than, say, Nigeria or Russia. And we should look at why some systems have been better at eradicating cronyism and focusing economic activity on adding value, creating wealth or mutual prosperity, rather than redistributing uh, from the masses into the hands of the cronies. What is the obsession with giving back to society? Because if you don't have uh, an annual report and then a sustainability report and then a social entrepreneurship report and you're not giving at least 2% of your profits back to aid society, that makes you the dark force um, emanating from Mordor or somewhere equally awful. What is that obsession? That's an interesting question. I think that in this way, Free market capitalism will flourish if the culture is renewed, a culture of entrepreneurship. Joseph Schumpeter once said that the modern society he admired when he looked back to the 19th century, the huge growth of entrepreneurship, sweeping away of slavery, of caste systems, of aristocracy, nobility, as Thomas Paine called it, a shortened form of no ability, which is what the nobility system was, was swept away. And Schumpeter said it was the first business respecting civilization in all of human history. And that was what he admired about it. Unfortunately, we've reacquired anti-market memes, if you want to use that term, mental constructs that continue to infect our mind. Pete, we look at someone who say, look how successful, he must have cheated somewhere. And the reason is, in most of human history, if you were rich, you were a criminal. That's true. You got rich by plundering and stealing yeah. from other people. Today, it doesn't necessarily follow. And countries that have more free market, wealthy people generally get their money because they added value. Nonetheless, in much of the world that hasn't adopted free market policies, rich people typically are crooks. They're cronies. They got it from dispossessing other people, uh, corrupt tenders in the public sector, all those sorts of things. In a severely damaged society like South Africa, can the free market improve the lot of South Africans? It's in, um, I'll make a robust statement. It's the only thing that can literally the only thing that can. And the reason is that the vast bulk of the population who are excluded from the economic system in the past are often perceived by elites, regardless of race or color, as helpless victims. Go talk to them. I find quite often they don't do that. These are not helpless people. I was just in Namibia meeting people who are really at low level subsistence farming or people living in in shacks and in informal and illegal settlements. They saved their money to be able to acquire and stake out this land. They saved their money to buy the resources. They want property rights. And they said, when we own it, we're going to build a brick house. 
and we're going to get plumbing, and we're going to have a nice lifestyle. It's human aspiration. It's absolutely, and it is distributed across all human populations. The poorest people in society are a reservoir of activity, entrepreneurship, and energy, and they're kept down by interventionism. What then is the role of government? Because governments see their role is to intervene. We have to justify their existence and therefore through that intervention it creates plenty of opportunities for those who are creating the intervention and that leads to endless fraud and corruption. We've seen plenty of it here in this market. So what is the role of government? Just it, simply the enabler? Yes. The Chinese have an expression called Wu Wei. It means active inactivity. It's a rather rich concept. It means that the role of the government is to be active in establishing the rules and then inactive and let the people themselves create prosperity. The ruler doesn't have sufficient wisdom to direct you when to plant and how much to plant, what you should be making and at what prices. That's for the people in the society to determine. But the active part is get the rules right so people understand what they are. In some sense, it's easy to belittle government because of the corruption and cronyism. But it is the most important input into economic outputs more important than oil, diamonds, gold, and so on. Why? Get the rules right, and it doesn't matter whether you have oil, diamonds, and gold. You can become prosperous, as the Swiss, the Dutch, many other societies, Hong Kong, have shown. Get the rules right. So government should do that properly, and then not mess around with how people organize themselves. Our government in South Africa sees it as its role to create jobs, yes. for example. It spends billions on creating jobs. A huge success. Well, it's not working. Uh, well, clearly. And it will continue to not work, yes. but it will continue to chip away at that particular format. How do you get the message through that, guys, simply write the rule book, make sure everybody sticks to the rules, and the rest will follow? I wish I knew the answer to that in some universal, this is how to do it. It depends on each particular case about engaging the public, getting them to understand and think about these issues. And one thing is giving a voice to the excluded. When you talk to them, what they typically say is, if you want to talk about subsistence farmers, I want property rights. They don't want the government to come in and build a well. They want property rights. That's the most important thing. And the places I visited where the government comes in and builds wells for people, the wells are not well maintained. The key is ownership. That is really the most important element. The other thing is to uh, in explain to policymakers that they also can benefit from a flourishing society. There's an old slogan from European Economic Development. Poor people, poor king. Rich people, rich king. Look at the evidence. What do you want for this society? A flourishing, prosperous society in which people are able to raise up and people can see a better life for their children than the lives that they have and their grandchildren, engage them and show them the evidence. And the evidence is totally conclusive in my opinion. Tom Palmer with the Cato Institute talking all about free market capitalism and why it can actually work.